Now in the new one, I can tell you this much. Anyone here, any, yeah, I'm sure you all know who there. You guys know who the village people are? The cowboy from the village people, Randy, is going to be appearing in Postal Freight. Now, as the company president, Vince Desi, told me, he said there was a film of Marlon Brando called The Wild One, where he was basically the leader of the biker gang. Randy plays the leader of the gay biker gang. <laughs> Uwe Boll is also going to figure in the game. Apparently, there's a mission where you can go and take on Uwe Boll. Nice. If you're not happy with his movies and that, you, and, you know, I, there's a good chance you may actually get to play as him in multiplayer if you want to do that as well. So. Look for that coming. Uh, they don't have a timeline. You know, basically, it's when it's done. They're not rushing it. Maybe later this year, maybe early next year, but it's in the work. Um, you know, uh, on the side note with these things, as we're getting into more and more technology, it's pushing the limits of computers. So um, if you need, like, RAM, uh, you know, remember how expensive RAM was. It's been coming down considerably. One that we've kept our eye on that is very good, we've been using some of that ourselves lately, is the Patriot memory. And you can get some good DDR2, DDR3. Uh, you know, two, four, eight meg sticks, and they're quite, or eight meg, excuse me, eight gig sticks, and they're quite uh, reasonably priced right now because in the down economy, uh, memory's going out, and we stress test a lot of stuff because we're starting to get into hardware now. And generally speaking, I found one of the nice things is they come with these uh, protectors. You know how you have the modules there, and you have to be careful not to pinch them from the side like that if you don't want your oils getting into them. Well, these come out of the box with a wraparound thing that not only protects them, but it keeps keeps the chip cool so you don't have a RAM under the game. So that's uh, something you definitely may want to check into. See, they like that announcement. How about that? <laughs> so anyway, as we've been talking, we talked about Halo. Uh, there's Halo Wars, which is in the process of coming out, which is basically a command and conquer real-time strategy version of the Halo games. And uh, we mentioned Windows 7. You know, right now it's still in the working stages. They have beta's up. If you need a full rundown. We have a very in-depth interview we posted about two weeks ago on the site, so you can get the cards later and go have a look at it. And now we get to talk about the stuff that is uh, a little ways out. Before we get to that, and uh, you saw the posters earlier, we'll have some more of those to give out. Anyone here played Left 4 Dead? Yeah. Which I, for my money, was, it was close with Call of Duty, but Left 4 Dead was by far the best game I had played last year. And on Friday, uh, I just got the news to share with you guys that the Left 4 Dead Critics Choice Edition and something called the DLC are on their way. So here it is. Uh, the first four Left 4 Dead DLC, which is dubbed the Left 4 Dead Survival Pack, is due for release this spring. It will introduce a Critics Choice Edition of the game that is heading for the retail stores and will also include access to all the content in, uh, introduced in the Left 4 Dead Survival Pack. Uh, basically, you will also have the um, uh, source software will be released, which will allow the modders to make their own maps and stuff for the game. Now, the Left 4 Dead Survival Pack is due for release this spring and will introduce a new multiplayer mode to the game entitled Survival. Two competing, uh, complete campaigns for versus mode, so you're going to get two new campaigns, and a Critics Choice edition of the game will be heading. So basically, new campaigns, new multiplayer modes, and the, uh, the access for the modding community to get in there and start creating their own custom levels for this. So this is something that is not going away. Which is good, because sadly, I'm sure like many of you, you're waiting for the next Half-Life. And uh, we've been told the good chance Half-Life 2 Episode 3 is not going to make it out in 2009. In fact, the story I heard was, let's see if I got the quote right, I may have it, I may have it wrong, but I believe it was the, get, the distance between Half-Life Episode 2 and Half-Life Episode 3 will be greater than the time between Half-Life Episode, Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 2 Episode 1. So, uh, but, on the bright side, while that is getting delayed, Portal 2 is well into the development stage right now, so we're hoping that <coughs> this year at PAX or E3, we'll get some gameplay footage and announcement about Portal 2. And one of the reasons for this is that basically, Portal and Half-Life 2, the storylines are going to intercede with each other. There was a brief hint of it at the end of Half-Life 2, Episode 2, and so I think there might be the fact that maybe before you show one, you have to show the other, so uh, we'll see how that goes, because honestly, Half-Life 2, Episode 3, outside of the brief photo, nobody's seen anything <coughs> heard anything about it in a while, but, you know, the nice thing with Valve is they may take their time, but when the games come out, they're very good, so while it's disappointing, it is nice to know at least you know, at least we're not going to have something that was rushed out to meet demand and that sort of thing. Now, 
Uh, one thing that has definitely not been rushed is Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> I can tell you this, it does exist. They're and still making it? They're still making it and it's coming along. They are, uh, about last December, a year ago, there was a video released which basically showed yeah. Duke working out. Uh, that was actually really good. Right. There have been some people that have gone by and seen the multiplay test. It is coming along. There is hope, still hope, that maybe this year we're actually going to get the big announcement at E3 or something like that. They're keeping it very quiet. I emailed the company and said, hey, you know, anything you want me to share at this convention, anything, any news, just, you know, nothing firm. It's coming a long time frame and there was no reply to it. But it, it is in development. People have seen it and have played it in the last six months, at least the work in progress, so it is coming along. So just and, a quick question. Yeah. When it comes to Duke Nukem Forever, um, the whole point of the fact that they've delayed it for the last 10 years is because they keep updating it because they want it to be the best right. game pretty and much they change ever. Their just like when Duke Nukem 3D came out, <coughs> it was like the best game at the time, right? Mm -hmm. So they're basically just trying to recreate that? Well, it wasn't so much that. What I understand, and of course, they're you know, they, as they said, we're trying to make the best game possible. What I'm told, it was a lot of engine changes. You know, when you when they first announced it, it was coming out on the Quake 2 engine, and then apparently they moved to the Unreal engine, and then of course there were the usual development things. I've heard there were changes in the company, that sort of thing. There were probably some creative things about maybe we want it to go in this direction or whatever. And so it's just been one of those things that I think once you know they finally got to a point because there was a time over the last ten years where state of the art engines were becoming obsolete six to eight months later. I think they probably wanted to get to a point almost uh, if you want to use the, the comparison with George Lucas. You know, a lot of people said George, why did you take so long to do the prequels? And as he said, I had a vision in my mind, and I had to wait for technology to catch up to allow me to do what I chose to do because. He could not have made the prequels from a visual standpoint at the time he made the original Star Wars films. It just could not have been done. So that the option would be to delay until he could do it or tone it down so it's nowhere near the point. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. It's just in the natural progression of making the game, they were constantly trying to make it as good as they can. Various things happen, business happens, but they seem to be very locked in and moving forward, which is very good because uh, supposedly Prey 2 is also in development stage. And see, Prey 2 is a prime example. This was a game by the same company that I remember very clearly seeing a big write-up in the gaming magazines about it, and then it died. And we were told, oh, it's too ambitious for its time, far too ambitious, not gonna happen. And then out of the blue, seven years later, boom, big story, Prey's back, here you go, it's coming in the next six months. And it, it, some similar things happen. You know, the designers sit down and they have these visions, and it gets to a point where you say, okay, I'm either going to have to severely compromise what I'm going to do, or we're going to have to wait and do it a different way. And then, of course, these things are extremely expensive. And sometimes money comes into it, and they say, guys, we're not going to pump a lot of money into this thing. <coughs> you can't, you're going to have to scale down your vision. But right now, fortunately, that's not happening. And uh, you're gonna, you should see these things in the not too, you know, year or so. It's hard to say with the economy being what it is now, how things are being affected, but they were at least at one point in development. Now, I'm sure you guys are no stranger to uh, id software. And id has got some things in the works. I know for a fact that a Doom 4 is in the planning stages. And uh, they are going to be doing this much, I can't tell the Activision's told me. They're, they're, they're not ready to make announcements yet but there is a new Castle Wolfenstein coming. Yes. And it's got a brand new engine that they're coming out with, and they've got a brand new game, and it's called Rage. Now, Rage is an interesting mix for them because it's not only a 3D shooter, it's a multi-platform game. It is basically, what's a good way of putting it? Mad Max meets Fallout, meets possibly Grand Theft Auto, meets a 3D shooter. They announced it at E3 last year.